Good morning. My name is Wayne Masaja, and this is my lovely wife, Paulette. We want to welcome you here to Kern United Methodist Church at our Sunday morning worship service. Wayne and I have been members of Kern for about 20 years. We really miss worshiping with our church family in person and look forward to the day when we can do it safely in person again. We are so happy you are joining us this morning. Good morning. I'm Donna Hester, pastor of Kern Memorial United Methodist Church in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And if you are joining us from Oak Ridge, from Tennessee, or around the world, I welcome you to worship this morning. And I want to share one announcement with you for this week. Ash Wednesday is just over a week away. And as we prepare for Ash Wednesday and the Lenten season, we here at Kern have developed a Lent at Home kit. You will see those showing up at your doorstep if you are local in the Oak Ridge area. If you are not and you would like to receive a Lent at Home kit, which will have pieces and elements of the Ash Wednesday service along with devotions and activities for the season of Lent. You can email us at signup at kernumc.org and we will send that to you. We want to gather from all of our places and prepare our hearts and our lives for the coming of uh, the resurrection of Jesus. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. How can we keep silent if we truly know the awesome power, mercy, and love of God? Yeah. 
praise you, O oh God. We praise you as we gather before you. We praise you, giving you thanks for all the ways in which you reach out and touch us, all the ways in which you care for us and guide us. And as we gather in your presence this morning, we come Centering our prayers on you, centering our prayers on others as we pray to you asking that you would be with those who are sick. Reach out and touch and heal them. We pray that you would be with those who grieve this day. Reach out and surround your arms around them and comfort them. We pray that you would be with those who are anxious. Reach out. Lift them up and strengthen them. We pray that you would be with your church. Reach out, guide us, and show us how to share the good news of your kingdom. We pray that you would be with the leaders of our country, our community. Reach out and grant them wisdom. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Hear us as we offer them, and hear us as we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. I'm reading Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. 
Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of a man. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we think about our tithes and our offerings this morning, I want to encourage you to think about this as our first Sunday of the month and as our Compassion Fund Sunday. Our Compassion Fund helps our neighbors and our community with food, with utilities, and with basic needs. We want to make sure we keep that fund stacked and stocked so that we can help one another. And our first Sundays will be Compassion Fund Sundays. You can give to the Compassion Fund just as you do the general offering by sending in your gifts in the mail using the drop slot in the door at the North Narthex, or by using electronic fund giving. Let us give thanks to God by giving our tithes and our offerings. <laughs> Gracious God, we give you thanks for the ways in which you gift us. And we come offering these our gifts to you. We offer them for your blessing, but we also off offer them as we are a part of building your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. After leaving the synagogue, Jesus, James, and John went home with Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed, sick with a fever, and they told Jesus about her at once. He went to her took her by the hand and raised her up. The fever left her, and she served them. That evening at sunset, people brought to Jesus those who were sick or demon-possessed. The whole town gathered near the door. He healed many who were sick with all kinds of diseases and threw out many demons. But he didn't let the demons speak because they recognized him. Early in the morning, well before sunrise, Jesus rose and went to a deserted place where he could be alone in prayer. Simon and those with him tracked him down. When they found him, they told him, Everyone's looking for you. He replied, Let's head in the other direction to the nearby villages, so that I can preach there, too. That's why I've come. He traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and throwing out demons. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is why I have come. Jesus uses those words to Simon, Andrew, James, and John because they still have a little difficulty. They're still having a difficulty of understanding Jesus' mission. His mission, which is to proclaim repentance and to proclaim the arrival of the kingdom of God. That is why Jesus came. But you wouldn't know it if you looked at this section of the Gospel of Mark. So much has happened in this first chapter. Jesus has been baptized. Jesus has been set apart for ministry. He's announced why he has come. He has called four disciples. He has gone to the synagogue and taught. And with that, he has healed a demon-possessed person. And now we come to the point in Mark's gospel this morning where Jesus, James, and John go with Simon and Andrew to their home, probably to rest for the night, probably for a meal and sustenance, but they get there. And when they get there, Jesus is made aware of the fact that Simon's mother-in-law is sick. She's in bed with a fever. 
And they tell Jesus about it. And Jesus goes to her. And when Jesus gets there, he goes to her, takes her by the hand, raises her up. The fever left her and she serves them. We don't know a lot about what happened, and yet so much happens in one verse. We now find the point in which Jesus has healed the man in the synagogue. Jesus has now healed Simon's mother-in-law. And while these are not the main mission of Jesus' ministry, it becomes the main emphasis of the people around. It gets out. Word quickly spreads. Not only did Jesus cleanse the demons in the synagogue, now he has taken the fever away. And the people gather. People gather in throngs around the door of Simon and Andrew's home. Jesus heals many. Many who were sick of all kinds of diseases. He throws out demons. And he doesn't allow the demons to speak. The crowds have gathered. The crowds are surrounding Jesus because they've gotten a look at his ministry. They've looked at his ability to heal. And they gather. They gather with their need. They seek him because of his miracles, not because of his message. But Jesus still focuses on the central emphasis of his message to proclaim repentance, to share the arrival of the kingdom of God. And yet, as a part of that sharing, a part of announcing the kingdom of God, Jesus also heals. We look this morning, we look intently at the healing of Simon's mother-in-law. While it is only one verse of this morning's scripture, it's an important verse to understand. Jesus touches her. Jesus raises her up. The fever disappears. And then she serves them. So often we think about this, and we think of this in consideration of what she most likely would have done as a woman, a healthy woman in the home, in providing hospitality. But if we look at this scripture, the word serve goes much deeper than just fixing a meal, than p- just putting the meal on the table. Serve goes into the deeper meaning of one called to serve another. Think about the night before Jesus dies. Think about him gathering with his disciples and washing their feet. He is one who has come to serve. And those he calls are ones who have been called 
to serve those with him at this moment. James, John, Simon, and Andrew have been called. They've been called to fish for people. Called to serve as ones who share the message and the mission in which Jesus comes. That the kingdom of God be made known. And so, Simon's mother-in-law is called to serve. Called to serve and share in the announcement of the kingdom. And at this moment, the kingdom is announced as a place of healing, a place of wholeness for all who are a part of the kingdom. We, we come to our own lives. And as we come to our own lives, how has Jesus touched us? How has Jesus called us to be a part of the mission and ministry of the kingdom? How do we proclaim repentance? How do we proclaim the arrival of the kingdom of God? It's February 7th, a day that for the last three years has been a monumental day in my life. You see, on February 7th, 2018, it started as any other day. It was a Wednesday. Just like a Sunday this year, one of the busier days in the church. But before the day was over, I found myself having had an ambulance ride. I found myself in the ICU. I found myself a stroke victim. I laid there. And on February 9th, Jesus came in and touched me and raised me. Not in the way of Jesus himself, but Jesus came as the physical therapist into the ICU room. Touched me, put on the belt. We went to see how I could walk. We left the room. We passed the nurse's station. We walked a little further and turned around. And by the time we returned back to the nurse's station, that physical therapist had taken the walker away from me. And from the nurse's station back to the bed, I walked by myself. And then, then after the physical therapist left, I was back in the bed by myself. Now, I'm going to be the first to admit that this took longer than one verse and the time that Mark seems to indicate. But we know from our previous studies over the last few weeks, Mark makes things happen quickly. They don't always happen that quickly. But as I went back to the bed, and as I thought about what had just happened, about the fact that I didn't need a walker, life started to unfold for the future. 
and my thoughts about service as well. I didn't need a walker, but I knew I was going to need some physical therapy. It was very obvious as I tried to eat that occupational therapy was also going to be needed. And there was also going to be speech therapy. But I knew, I knew that as part of my call to service and to serve the kingdom, that I had to be back into this position where I find myself this morning. I didn't understand it in quite the same way. I just knew that the fight to return to the call to ministry had to occur. It's taken three years. It's taken to this point of this week that as I looked, as I studied, I understood what had occurred. I had been lifted up, and it was my duty to serve. When Jesus touches us, when Jesus lifts us and calls us, our response is to serve. How has Jesus been a part of your life? Where has Jesus walked into your life, taking you by the hand and raised you up? More importantly, when Jesus has raised you up, where have you served? Jesus has come. Jesus has come to proclaim repentance and the arrival of the kingdom of God. And in announcing that arrival of the kingdom of God, Jesus has called us to serve, to be a part of that kingdom. And now Jesus calls us to share and to understand that kingdom and to help others know the kingdom as well. Where do you serve? How will you serve as Jesus calls you and heals and touches you. Let us pray. Jesus, we come to you this morning. We come knowing that we find our own places of illness, our own fights with the spiritual forces of wickedness, and you come to us. You enter into our presence and lift us up. We also know that when you lift us up, you have called us once again to be a part of your mission, a part of sharing your message. As we rise up, as we serve, lead us and help us to look to you to share our witness with others. Amen.
Salvation sounds a new beginning As distant hearts begin believing Redemption's bid is unrelenting Your love goes on of Jesus take your hand and lift you up so that you may be of service to others. Amen. <laughs> 